Hey, it's Rob Jackson with Fandroid.com, and I'm here with all the Nexus goodies that we got from Google I.O. 2012. We've got the Nexus 7 Android tablet that was just announced, the Nexus Q streaming media player, and the Galaxy Nexus, which has been out for a while, but the difference here is it's got Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. So we're going to take a few moments and walk you through um, the software and some of the changes and updates. Um, first thing that was announced is uh, Project Butter, which is just making the UI much quicker and smoother. It was already pretty good experience, but now it's it's immediate, it's instantaneous, and that's they butter. It's buttery smooth, really. Is why they um, why they called it Project Butter. And the multitasking window is immediate. Slides through super quickly, and you can jump between um, different tasks. So. Very nice interface, really quick and enjoyable to use. So Project Butter just further improves on the speed, uh, and this is powered by a Tegra 3 chipset, so uh, that makes it all the more smoother. Um, one cool thing that was announced with Android 4.1 is better widget support and home customization. So say we're on this Tegra Zone uh, widget here, we want to move it to our home screen, but the size of what's left, there isn't enough room. But if we just drop it there in the middle, the other widgets will move around them. Uh, and you can do this in all different in all different variations. So for example, if we move this widget over to the blank screen, now you see there's not a huge spot there for the widget. This is a much bigger widget, but if we drag it over it will resize itself and if you want to you can resize the widgets to your liking but it auto sizes the widget based on um, what how much space you've got left on each screen and where the icons are and it will reposition them which is um, really nice one cool thing is if you know Apple's Siri then um, you know people talk about that a lot and how cool it is Google has a feature and it's just baked right into Google voice search, so they don't have any special name for it as far as I know, um, but if we go up to the Google search bar up here, you can see actually there's the voice button on the right and we can say something um, and it will do a web search, but if we ask a specific question it may know the answer, so let's test it out. How tall is the Empire State Building? And we had the volume weighed down on that, but it reads it, uh, reads you back the answer. And the voice actually sounds Why remarkably you do it one more time human. So we can hear the voice. Let's okay. Let's. How tall is the Empire State Building? Empire State Building is one thousand four hundred fifty-four feet tall. And it's really cool. There are different types of questions you can ask too. Let's ask about a baseball game. When did the Baltimore Orioles play? The Orioles are playing the Indians today at 4.05 p.m. Which So that's pretty cool. And then I could go ahead and jump through to a preview. And it takes me to MajorLeagueBaseball.com. And I get to actually see a preview of the game. So this is a really cool feature. I'm excited to see what type of uh, questions it will respond to directly like that. Because if you search for something um, that it doesn't know the answer to, it will do a Google web search. Nexus 7. And it said search Nexus 7 because I actually pressed the voice command while I was still talking about it. But you can see then it does a, a Google search for Nexus 7, which is pretty cool here. Another important feature that's tied into the search is uh, Google Now, which why don't you show them that, that default screen, which actually brings up everything that's going on for you in, well, today. And Rob probably has nothing going on. Click on the search button. and then you'll see the now screen. This is pretty much everything that's going on. Uh, it shows you your weather, it will show you upcoming appointments, what's in your calendar, which is very, very convenient because you're not really looking for events, it just tells you what's going on. So it says show sample cards here, let's take a look at that. I'll zoom in the camera here. So we can show there's, there's weather now cards, it will show you your weather, public transit. The transit stuff's really cool because based on your calendar, um, it can show you when you need to leave to get to certain appointments. 
uh, based on when trains or buses are going to come, sports scores, traffic, flights, translation, currency, and time back home. So let's look at example of next appointment, sample card. There you go. And you can just see some of these. So um, another feature that I really like on here is the notifications. Now it, it's kind of hard to force a notification, but you can see here's one when we pull down. Um, you can pause, play music. Um, there is, here's an email one. We can jump to our email, but the cool thing is you can do a lot, you can, you can activate certain settings through your notification. So rather than just tapping on the notification and going to the application, you can respond and interact with different applications in the notification bar. Uh, app developers, I assume, will have an API to work with the notification so that in different apps and games, you can interact differently, which kind of extends the functionality um, of Android in that status bar greatly. Right now, you know, I use the core Google apps probably the most, Gmail, with Google Maps, with the Android app, of course, but really I don't use anything more than the notifications bar because that's a quick access to all your apps and what's going on now with your application. So to be able to pull down your notification, notification bar and actually perform actions in there without having to jump to the app first and then seeing what's going on in the app and then, and then interacting with it. So it reduces uh, a step. Um, which is nice. Another feature uh, is Android Beam, improvements to Android Beam. So Android Beam is the NFC um, chip, using NFC chip in here to, if you put two NFC capable devices together, um, it will beam from one device to the other. So some improvements in that are just the type of content you're able to beam over. Uh, I think the announcements only allow you to beam the new type of content over if you've got Android 4.1. So uh, you'll have to wait for that up update. Um, I guess another big update wasn't necessarily specific to Android 4.1, but is improvements to the Google Play Store that now include um, magazines, movies, and TV. So you can actually download a Google Magazines app and uh, and look and subscribe to magazines or buy individual editions, and they just look really nice especially on this uh, IPS display on the on the Nexus 7 so you can see there's a subscribe button um, or a buy button for $3.99 and uh, this will be a really nice feature to have magazines in here and make it more of your full multimedia experience I know a lot of people were waiting for movies and TV as well so the Google Play Store is really becoming that all-in-one entertainment hub um, for everything. So that's a quick look at the software on the uh, Nexus 7 with Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. Uh, we'll have a full review of the Nexus 7 uh, in the days to come. So stay tuned to Fandroid.com. Thanks guys. Talk to you soon.